So this is a seismic profile from the Inamori Firth and uh, let's describe some of its seismic character. Starting at the top here, we can see that we have a series of discontinuous reflectors that are sub-horizontal, generally running across like this. But as we come down in the section, we can see that these reflectors are far more continuous and can be traced for considerable distances across the profile. All this upper part of the profile shows very closely spaced, very fine reflectors. In other words, they're high frequency. As we come down in the profile, we can see that the frequency decreases so that uh, the resolution down here in the deeper part of the section is significantly reduced compared to that in the shallow. This loss of frequency content from shallow down the section is typical of seismic data. When interpreting seismic data, it's usually best to start shallow and move deep so we can use the higher resolution image to guide us. There's a better chance of tracing out the continuity of reflectors. So let's try this first of all by starting with the green reflector, which is this high amplitude feature running across the profile. Okay, so we're going to just pick this green reflector and we're going to stay on this part here coming across. And as we get to here, we can see that it doesn't quite connect. There may be a fault, in fact, coming through here so that the reflector is slightly offset, but we can continue to trace it along now here. The same character all the way through here. Oops, wobbled off that a little bit. Let's try and stay on it. All the way across, guided by this through that little bit that's a bit vaguer, and we can, can keep that running all the way across. So there is our green reflector. Okay, now let's move into slightly deeper parts where the continuity is slightly more ambiguous and we'll pick out the blue reflector this time. Right, so let's start here. Trace it across like this and it wobbles down, doesn't it? Somewhere through here, like this, coming across. And now it's gradually rising. Gradually rising, gradually rising. Now through here, we're just going to be guided by the adjacent reflectors so that it keeps coming up, keeps coming up, keeps coming up and out. So there's our blue reflector. So let's turn our attention now to the orange. Now this is clearly going to be more complicated because we can see that as we trace it across here, it continues, but then something happens here. And if we try and trace it in from this side down, there's going to be a mismatch in this area here. But nevertheless, let's see what we can do. And we'll start off picking this area over on the left. Okay, so this isn't too bad to start with. We can pick our reflector in like this, slight wiggle into this area. And I'm not gonna push it any further than about here. Now let's come over to the other side. Okay, so let's pick it from here. And we can trace it along through here like this. And I think it then drops down through here, something like this. Okay, now, now we have a choice. Does it go up to here or does it go down to here? Let's think about this a little bit. Well, let's just step out because you can see that just above the orange reflector that we just picked, there's another prominent amplitude feature that comes through that's parallel to it that shows the same wiggles as we go along. And so in other words, there's a package of strata in here of that thickness that we can find to find the orange reflector. So if we were to join up to this one in here and go up expecting to find this one, well, we can't find it. There's a different seismic character in here. So it's highly likely then that this reflector or this strata drop down to here. So this package is the one on top. So with that in mind, let's continue our interpretation. So we're suggesting that it's this package in here that is our orange reflector, and it's simply dropped down on a fault coming down through here. Well, before drawing some of these faults in, let's try and trace the continuity of the reflector that overlies the orange, this amplitude system coming down through in this position, and see if we can track it uh, across the profile as well. So for that, I'm going to use a brown colour. And we'll start over on here, and we can trace this in across the profile, again, to stop about here. 
and we can continue from this side and pick the same feature across something like this, like wiggle in here. And as we said, we think it's this one in here that goes through. So we've got a package of rocks that we can trace across the profile. Let's just color it in. Okay, so I've got some crayons. I'm just color this, this package in just lightly like this across our profile, picking it up again over here. It just helps us see what's going on as we come across. I'm going to tidy some of this up a little bit more as we go, but let's just put that in now to see what we've got. Next, let's put some faults in because the offset of this brown layer that's topped by the brown horizon and based by the orange one, clearly offset with a fault through here. So let's draw the fault in somewhere through there with that sense of movement. And on this side, looks like there's a fault that actually comes up somewhere like this. Again, with that sense of movement, defining a little grab and structure bounded by two normal faults dropping down like this. Now we need to tidy up our interpretation and snap our horizons onto the fault. So let's bring this all the way up to here, this one up to here, making sure these offsets are working. And we can do the same uh, with the orange. So the orange comes up to the fault there, snap it, snap it. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, and then it's just color in the rest of the layer. Okay, so we go just color that right in against the fault. So we've now specified how this unit works across that fault, normal fault down throwing to the right, and our normal fault here, dipping left, down throwing to the left. And there's our structural interpretation at depth. Let's push the fault a bit further because you can see there's actually a hint of this fault maybe continuing just up through here, which explains that little tiny offset, but it's minuscule compared to that. So maybe this fault is reactivated somewhat later just to tweak a bit in the shallow section, reactivating down its length, of course. Right, I'm going to turn my attention now to the unit above and we're going to pick some reflectors out within it to show how it changes thickness. You'll notice it's much thicker against this normal fault in the hanging wall compared to the foot wall side. And similarly, this package of rocks between the brown and the blue reflector thin out towards the right. So let's just pick um, this reflector here. I'm going to put this in black just to come through here to see how this works. It hits the fault, so presumably it's going to come out on this side as we come along like this, tapering away like this, converging as we come across this side with the brown reflector. We can do the same with this reflector here maybe, try and trace it through. Just to get an idea, look, this one's not really cut by the fault, so this fault stopped moving by then. And this continues all the way across here, gets really vague, doesn't it? So we're just gonna be guided by the adjacent reflectors to see how this works. Coming through, look how it tapers in to here and so forth. So we've got a thickening of this package as we go towards the faults on this side. Let's just snap these up to the faults in here. And we can see this other package sort of banks in over the top. Difficult to see how these correlate across the fault, particularly I've picked it, but perhaps something like this with the upper one coming through. So the offset's very small there. And finally, maybe something like this for the other one, although that's really vague. So this, this section in here, it's not quite clear how it correlates across the fault, but you get an idea of how the stratigraphy thickens and thins as it crosses these fault blocks. Well, we can do a similar exercise between the blue and the brown reflectors up in here for this package. Uh, and let's just taste this across, shall we, and just see where it goes. Going through here. Again, just guiding along across here like this. Just being guided by the adjacent reflectors, whoops, just like this, coming along like this. As it comes, and we can see it begins to taper across as it comes. And here it looks like it's actually converging with the blue reflector completely. So by the time we're here, it looks like it's a butt sit, and I'm going to show that with a little arrowhead. It's not a fault. This is a feature we're going to use to show a stratigraphic relationship called onlap. On this side, presumably the reflector will continue, not offset by the faults because there's hardly any fault displacement on this side. So it goes off something like that. 
again we can pick out now the thickness changes in this package as we go okay so let's just color that one in through here like this like this across that fault but there's the fault barely exists at this stage just got that little tweak that goes up so the fault is more or less sealed at least the main displacement by this light blue package that I'm coloring in through here and as we come across we can see that this light blue package is tapering out wedging against the underlying material so presumably there was a pre-existing tilt here that is simply being banked in by the younger strata obviously sit on top there we go so let's start from the top and think about the history in here and these strata in the shallow part of the section well they're cut by this little tiny bit of faulting but more or less are railroad straight and are simply essentially horizontal and overlying all the more complex structure at depth so these are more or less if we ignore this little tiny fault they're more or less post tectonic until down to about here, or maybe even this light blue package, which just banks in some residual um, bathymetry uh, in the underlying basin structure. So all this package in here, I'd be tempted to think about as being after the deformation, as I say, with excluding that little fault there. The deeper parts of the section, this brown unit, has been offset by the faulting, so it clearly was there pre-faulting. Okay, the same obviously goes for the rest of the brown. Whereas this package in here shows radical thickness changes across the faults. So presumably is synchronous with the faulting. In other words, it's filling little basins as they're growing. So we can use the seismic stratigraphy in here to develop a history of faulting in our basin. So we've looked at the seismic character and then we've traced some reflectors systematically building up the geological history as revealed on this seismic profile.